Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 28. In this tutorial we'll take a look at fixing our buttons to make them look even nicer, we'll add some music to our scene right here, and we'll also start linking the scenes together. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else I have on this channel. And if you've enjoyed this series up until this point and feel like supporting a good cause that I have going on here, then feel free to check out my Patreon where you will earn early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So let's take a look at this section primarily in this tutorial. So I'm going to actually take the original menu image that we created, just a raw image, and if you remember it just kind of slides and it looks a little bit unnatural because it's still black and then we have the whole particle system going on here and it just doesn't quite look right. So I'm going to change the colour on the alpha to zero so the buttons look like they're sliding into place naturally. So speaking of buttons, let's work on play game. Now what I'd like to do is change this so as it becomes more of just an actual button that we can interact or rather text that we can interact with rather than just the plain old horrible button that this is right now. So I'm going to start by changing the text on the play button and I'm going to have that as white. But I'm also going to change the font as well. So in fonts folder we have these two. I want to change the play game to say uh, play game in this particular font probably increase the size of the font because I can just see it here so I know I've got to increase it to let's say about 18 maybe more but we'll see what happens in a second and on the actual button itself normal colour I'm going to turn off on the alpha and highlighted colour I'm actually going to highlight it mm, what colour should we have let's have it a very deep orange browny kind of colour just for now until we know what we're really going for uh, press colour we'll have as black I think and disable colour we'll keep as grey because we're going to deal with disable colours in just a moment because we're going to have play game and load game as well Speaking of which, let's actually change this to say new game. And let's press play. So let's click anywhere. And we can see that looks a little bit better now. And now this looks like something we can interact with, like an actual button. Obviously, it looks like the text does need to increase quite a lot. So let's increase it to 24, maybe more. What about 30? How does 30 look when we play? Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. So we'll have it as 30. So the same is going to apply to our other buttons as well. So here's a neat little trick that we can use. Let's go to our options button, expand it, and text. We want to make the text here the same as our play button. And what we can do is if we go over here, make sure we are on play button, text, and over here select the little cog icon, and then you can see copy component. If you select that, and go here onto our options button, click, and then we can have either paste components as new or paste component values. Let's click paste component values and you'll see it changes instantly. The only thing we'll have to change now is the name of this button. So it'll be options. And the same can apply to every object that we use. So the button itself, play button, what we can do is take the button script here and go on copy component and go on to option button and then paste as values and that didn't work how we intended let's try that again so copy component and then option button and then paste component values in fact we try paste as new it doesn't want to work does it it's been a little bit silly i think i think i know why actually and it could possibly be, in fact, let's press play and let's just quickly check what it looks like. I think I know why. So yeah, we've got that looking a little bit daft there. So it's going to be a bit of a pain to actually take the button itself. So the text looks like it works properly, but the button itself, not quite so much. So I'm just going to undo a little bit there and get ourselves back to where we were. And we can change this alpha, oops. I had the wrong one selected there. So option button, 
Let's get back to where we were, of course, naturally. There we go. Are we back? Not quite. <laughs> Just need to undo a couple more times. There we go. So there we go. It now says options. So the option button itself, let's change the alpha, turn off. And highlight the color, we want the same as here. So that's just something to bear in mind. Copying a component can actually be quite useful depending on what the object is. But as we've just discovered, it doesn't entirely work properly with buttons. I wasn't anticipating that, unfortunately. So all we've done here is copy the hex value for the highlighted color. And we're just going to paste it here. That's the hex value. And press color, again, we'll have as black. And yep, that's the options button. So what we're going to do is add in a couple more buttons because ultimately we're not going to have three. We're going to have about five, I think. So I'm going to delete the credits button because there's no point to it right now. Uh, rename option button just to be, oops, just to actually have option button rather than have the one in there. Same with the play button. Rename it, get rid of that one. And we'll take options down because that's going to be the third one I think we'll have. So we'll have... New game is the top one. Hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it down. We'll have that as load game. So load button. And let's change the text on there to say load game. Now, obviously, because we've not dealt with loading and saving just yet, we need to have this button as inactive. So we're going to have it as interactable unticked. And you'll see there it highlights gray. So if we press play, this is where that disable color comes into play. And you can see that we can't actually interact with it, but it is highlighted gray. So what we can do with that is we can basically have, uh, well, I guess we can have either a full or minimal. Um, I guess it's just kind of, we'll leave it as it is, to be honest. We'll have that as 150 maybe. So that's currently uninteractable. We can't interact with it just yet because we have no load game. Uh, next one down is going to be options, I think. So we'll have options right there. Then we'll have some credits. So we'll duplicate that button again, bring it down to here. And we'll have this as credit button. And then finally, we'll have a quit button, but we'll have it a little bit further down. So hold control, press D again, have it somewhere here. And quit button. And then obviously let's change all the text on them so as it makes sense quit game and then credits we'll change the text on there to say credits okay so we have all that in place that's our menu now let's add some music into it let's see how it sounds so let's go to our audio folder i want to create uh, in fact i'll just drag and drop so I just have this intro menu music that you can use, head to the website, download an assets, RPG series, and it's yours to use however you want to. I'm going to attach it to the main camera, so drag and drop. And I think it is going to be quite loud, so I'm actually going to decrease the volume quite a lot. So I'm going to have it as 0.1 for now, just to see how it sounds. Let's press play and check it out. Okay. Fair enough, it's all good. Nice. Okay, so let's have a go at linking now. So when I mean linking, what I actually do mean is to bring the new game into play. So the scene we originally created, the big massive one with the world and all that, we're gonna link that to new game now. So let's head to our assets folder and actually I'm gonna save the whole project first. And let's go to area zero one. In fact, no, do you know what? We'll stay in main menu and we'll go file, build settings. And we'll add this scene up here. So add open scenes. Now we will be moving these around later on in this series because we're gonna have a splash screen first. That's gonna be the first scene that it moves on and so forth. And linking this uh, whole scene is pretty much you could probably do it yourself with all the knowledge you've learned up until this point. So we're going to combine two different things we've learned from two different tutorials to make this button work. Let's go to our scripts folder. and Let's go into main menu folder as well, actually. Uh, should we do this? Let's do it in this script. So menu controls. We may as well keep this all within one single script. Why have multiple scripts when we could just keep it in here? Because ultimately, what this script is going to contain 
is just a single method for each of those buttons. And like I say, we've already dealt with buttons before and how they work, but we've never dealt with a button that links to another scene. So this is what we're going to do here. And obviously we'll be dealing with scene manager because how else are you going to transfer to another scene? It's as simple as that really, isn't it guys? So once this is loaded in Visual Studio or your preferred uh, application, all we need to do is add at the top when it loads and thinks about it for me. There we go. Using Unity Engine dot scene management semicolon and then let's have public void and we'll have this as new game open close bracket open curly bracket and now all we need to do is scene manager dot load scene and in brackets i believe oh Sorry about this guys, uh, I should have mentioned that during the last tutorial and this tutorial I've actually changed to Unity 2018.2. So originally I started this series in a version of 2017, it may have been 2017.1 actually, or maybe Unity 5, I can't quite remember. Either way, I've just upgraded, that's why that's popped up there, because it just has decided to. Uh, so anyway, the point is here, uh, I think it's actually scene one or zero. So when Unity has had a little think about things, we will actually check that out. So file, build settings, and it is zero. So that's fine. So load scene, zero, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So now all we need to do is, we've done it before guys, attach that to the button. So play button, and click plus, drag and drop menu control, no function, menu controls, and new game. So, press play, and we should see this all in action now. There we go. Now, if you feel like being a little bit, maybe different, maybe something... It's not specifically a loading scene that we'll do, but it just gives the player that little bit of incentive. I mean, we probably will deal with loading screens later on in this series, much later on when we actually have a lot to load. But generally what you can do is if you go game object and let's go to UI and let's go to a raw image right there. I'm gonna have this stretched much in the same way as we do with anything. So black and stretch and zero out all the positions there. So it covers the screen completely. Right click, rename, and load. We'll have loading game. Now what we'll do is we'll add some text to that. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because we have um, click anywhere. Is that the one? So I'm going to take the text out of click anywhere. If, or should I? In fact, I'm going to turn off load game. And it's this text here. That I want to use. Okay, it's fine. Do you know what? We'll start from scratch because, again, why not? So, loading game, we'll have that on. Right click, UI, text, right there. I'm going to have it on the bottom right. I'll have it as 40 and I have it say loading dot dot dot. And we'll have it as white. And we'll just expand the size of the text box. And we'll also have the right font. So in fonts, uh, drag and drop to there. And yep, you've guessed it, down here at the bottom. So essentially what's going to happen now is I'm going to turn that off. And like I said, although it's not technically a loading screen, it just gives the player some direction and understanding of what's happening because it looks like it freezes when we press new game, doesn't it? It just looks like it freezes. So we need to give some kind of direction. So let's head back to our menu control script and add in two variables. Public audio source, and we'll have, uh, what should we call it? Menu music, semicolon and public game object and loading game semicolon so before scene manager appears here 
what you need to do is menu music dot stop open close bracket semicolon and loading game dot set active true semicolon and save and we just need to set those two variables in the menu control option right here. Uh, so we've got menu music is going to be on main camera. So main camera can go onto there. And loading game is going to be that one right there. So you can see what's happening here. We stop the music, display the loading game scene, and then we load the scene. So I'm going to save my project and press play. There we go. Perfect. So that is how we can at least create a simple loading screen because what's happening is when we press play, it's trying to load that scene straight away. So obviously it'll take a little bit more time on some computers than others, but at least if we display that little message to say it's loading, then at least there's some understanding there. So next tutorial, what we'll take a look at is we'll look at menus within the game itself. And what I mean by that is if we go to area zero one, press play we have this here and although we're doing everything we're doing you know we're going here getting the stats of whatever there's no actual visual stats in the game itself no menu so we're going to create effectively a pause menu at first but it's going to contain all of our stats and quests and everything so we're going to start building up on that so guys until that next tutorial thank you very much for watching